What's going on guys? It's your boy Sarar. Welcome to the ultimate bass fishing tier list. So today I have compiled a list of various lures and techniques across all of bass fishing and today we're going to rank them from S all the way down to F. Now the way that I'm going to rank these various lures and techniques is going to be based off a few different factors. You know everything from versatility to how well they work year round or if they're very niche or very specific times of the year and price because you know not everybody has four to five hundred dollars to spend on a roman made mother so this video is definitely gonna be a bit longer and i don't have a script for this so these are just kind of my raw thoughts on each of the lures and techniques that i talk about today all right guys, so let's get right into it. Today, we are gonna start with crankbaits. Now, crankbaits are one of those lures that tend to work year round. They definitely have their specific purposes in spring looking like crawfish or in fall looking like shad, but generally you can catch fish all year on this bait. As far as price goes, you can get some good crankbaits for, you know, six to seven bucks, which honestly is not bad in the world of fishing. You can, of course, spend more money on the really top tier brands like Lucky Craft, and you're spending closer to 15 to 17 bucks. But in my opinion, it's not needed. You can catch just as many fish on a six or seven dollar crankbait. So with all that considered, I'm going to put crankbaits up in an A tier. They're not quite S because me personally, that's not something I'm going to pick up every single day or have tied on every single time I go out. Next, we're going to get started on the various top waters that I have in this tier list, and that's going to be with poppers. Now, poppers, in my opinion, are what I would consider to be the finesse top water. And by that I mean you can fish it slower. It's not a very run and gun. I'm, I'm moving the bait fast all the time. Hoping for a reaction strike type of bait. It's something that's much more methodical. You can slow it down around certain types of cover. And hopefully you can get those finicky fish to come up. And just, you know, slowly warm up and react to the bait. Not to say you can't fish it fast. I know a lot of times when these fish are really active, you can just pop that thing consistently. Just pop, 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 pop. It's making so much noise and chugging and moving water on the surface that these fish come up and eat it. Again, a good popper, I would say, is about the same as a crankbait. You can find it pretty inexpensive and some good ones, too. My personal go-to is actually the Rebel Pop R, which is not a very um, expensive bait, per se. So the versatility is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's as good as a crankbait, but it's definitely still good. So for that reason, I'm going to throw it in B. All right, let's switch it up now, and let's go a little bit finesse. And for that, let's look at the Texas Rig. Now, the Texas Rig is a very versatile bait. You can put anything from, you know, a small bait fish imitator to a crawfish to a big worm. The possibilities are basically endless. There's so many different types of soft plastics out there, both colors, designs, etc. So as far as versatility goes, 10 out of 10. And honestly, no matter what time of the year it is, you can probably catch a fish on a Texas rig. You can do everything from fishing it for spawn fish in the spring to throwing it around grass and timber and different types of cover in the, in the summer, excuse me, to even putting on one of those small swim baits on the back of it and using it in the fall to look like those spawning shad. And even in the winter when things get really tough and those fish start to go deep, you can throw on a Texas rig throw it out deep and just and just slowly drag it across the bottom and a lot of those fish that are schooled up maybe on a deep rock pile or something like that these fish will come up and just slowly eat that thing the price 
is very cheap. But caveat to fishing plastics as cheap as they are is you lose a lot of that tackle a lot of the time. Get hooked up in a rock, get hooked up in a tree, you're going to break that thing off, you're going to retie. But at the same time, you can get a pack of hooks for three to four bucks, you can get a pack of weights for three to four bucks, and you can get a pack of worms for three to four bucks. So with all of that considered, this is going to be our first S-tier bait. 100%. Definitely an S-tier bait. I almost always have one of these tied on, unless I'm using one of the other finesse techniques that we're talking about today. And next we're going to look at, ooh, 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 we're going to look at big swim bait. Now, now hold on, hold on. I'm going to show you guys what I mean by big swim bait. When I'm talking big swim bait, this is what I'm talking about right here. You know, these are, these are both really big baits. This one right here, this is a seven and a half inch bait. This one is about, I would say, six and a half inches, close to seven inches. So these are, these are big profile baits. They're meant to look like bluegill. They're meant to look like trout. You know, they're meant to look like carp. There, there's a lot of different things that these mimic, but they're all meant to be big fish baits. So as far as usability goes, I know a lot of tournament fishermen that actually utilize these like, like search bait. So in tournament, they swim these around and they're not actually expecting to catch fish on these big things. They want to find fish that are following that bait up because that makes them understand that, you know, there's big fish in the area. Or there's fish in this area. You know, this cove actually has a lot of fish because I had, you know, 10 followers in this cove. Then you can go back with something like a drop shot, a Texas rig, one of those finesse baits, and you can actually get those fish to commit on tournament day. So it's just more or less a guide. It's a search engine for you to actually find these fish. And then you come back with the typical techniques and you go catch them. I would say the roughest thing about big swim baits as you can probably assume is the price now that little box behind me here is on my bed that's an expensive little box right there <laughs> because those baits range anywhere from 25 to you know upwards of 150 bucks so big swim bait fishing is definitely not for your average fisherman or your beginning fisherman this is for someone who's seasoned who knows the use for these baits and can actually utilize them to catch fish or for tournament purposes like i talked about but as far as this tier list goes i'm honestly gonna throw these at a d now personally i do throw them i do enjoy throwing them and i see the use for them but for the sake of the tier list, for somebody who's beginning, who wants to get into bass fishing, that's not something you guys want to get into. I think it's good to have one, just one that's a very versatile bait, but definitely not the first thing you should pick up when you go out. All right, next we got chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. Now I'm going to throw spinnerbaits and chatterbaits into the same category here. The reason for that is they are so similar in the areas you throw them, the colors you throw them in, and kind of the, more or less the times of year and reasons that you would be throwing them. So spinnerbaits and chatterbaits shine around grass. Grass is really tough for a lot of these other baits like poppers, crankbaits, all these hard baits with the exposed hooks. It's really hard for those baits to get through the grass. You make two reels and boom, you've got grass on it. The chatterbaits and the spinnerbaits, that hook is a little bit more, I would say, covered, less exposed, and so they cut through. The blades help it cut through. The positioning of the hook makes it so that the hook doesn't get a lot of grass on it. So these baits shine around grass, and from everything I've seen, both in tournament, in my own experience, in high-level tournaments, these fish just 
or these baits just catch bigger fish. I don't know the reason for it, but the average fish that's caught on a spinnerbait or a chatterbait is going to be a good fish. I've seen so many tournaments won on the Z-Man Jackhammers spinnerbait. It's a pretty versatile bait between the various colors that you can use and the fact that these baits can basically go at any depth depending on how fast you reel it and how far you let it sink. The other place that these baits shine is in wind. A lot of these baits, when that wind gets up, you know, above 20, 25 miles an hour, it gets really hard to throw anything. <laughs> but these baits, you can go beat a bank and just go fast, really fast, and just chuck and wind, chuck and wind. And you will catch fish even in those really tough, really windy conditions. Now, the one drawback to these baits, at least for a good one, is price. Now, I've seen the difference in a cheap versus a higher-end spinnerbait and chatterbait, and I've seen the point in buying better. So these baits will range you closer to $13 to $14 for a good one. So with that being said, I'm going to throw this in C just because of the price, but I mean, it is a very good bait this this honestly is kind of between a b or a c for me you know it could be a b tier bait for a tournament fishermen probably closer to an a tier for a tournament fisherman but for the everyday fisherman for somebody who's starting out this is a c tier bait all right now let's look at the drop shot so the drop shot has always had a special place in my heart not only is it the bait that I've caught the most fish on. It is the bait that caught me my first ever bass. For those of you who don't know what a drop shot is, a drop shot is a hook, just like a nice little circle hook, with a worm on it, and then further down the line, you have a weight, just like a little, a little stick weight. And all you're doing is you're keeping that bait off the ground anywhere from, you know, foot to a foot and a half something like that this bait in my opinion is the most versatile bait that you can throw i've seen people throw little swim baits on there instead of worms and fish it slow towards the bottom and it looks like a bait fish i have supreme confidence in it with a green pumpkin worm wigged whack bleh, rigged wacky style so it's hooked in the middle and you have the two ends kind of popping through like a worm that's trying to swim through the water. And you can throw this bait all year, shallow to as deep as you want, and it'll catch fish year round. I would say I have this bait tied on 95% of the time. And for that, it, it, it's S tier. Honestly, I, I want to put it in an S plus tier because it's just that good. All right, let's stick with the finesse baits we're going to talk about the ned rig now now the ned rig is something near and dear to my heart as well um company that started this is z-man that is the company that started out the idea of the ned rig the ned rig is a very simple system of literally just a mushroom style jig head with a simple j hook with a three to five inch bait on the back anything from a worm to a crawdad to a little swim bait and it's it, it just catches fish i don't have anything to say other than it just catches fish now the difference with the z-man line of products is that the plastic that they use is extremely durable i've literally had a day where on a single bait i was able to catch 46 fish and the other thing about these baits is it's extremely buoyant so when that bait hits the bottom and that head hits the bottom that bait is gonna float straight up right behind it and it it just has such realistic action it is it is an incredible bait this is one of those also with the drop shot that I would say I have on 95% of the time. 
So for that, this is definitely going at S as well. Definitely one of those baits to have tied on no matter where you are in the country, no matter what time of the year it is, it's going to get bit. Next, we're going to talk about spoons. Now, spoons is a very broad category because a lot of people, when they think of spoons, think of these little tiny spinners that people use for trout. When I'm talking about spoons here, I'm talking about the big six-inch flutter spoons that are used in bass tournaments. So these baits are pretty niche. Their biggest use is on ledges. So way out in the deep, typically on river systems, but also in lakes sometimes, you know, there's these big ledges that just fall into deep drop-offs. And these fish, a lot of times, will just hold on those ledges. So all these guys are doing is they're throwing those baits way out there letting it hit bottom and they're just they're just pulling up on the rod that spoon goes up flutters down pops up flutters down me personally i honestly don't know too much about the flutter spoon i don't fish it much but that's because i don't have a lot of areas where i'm at in california where that bait would shine this is much more a i, I would say a southern type of technique not to say that it doesn't work but it works in a very niche situation and for that reason i'm gonna give it an e i think it's a good bait where that type of technique is prominent all right next we're gonna look at the deep diving crank now i talked about the shallow and the mid diving cranks earlier the deep diving crank same concept as the regular crankbaits, except for it shines in deep water, obviously. Its main uses are in the dead of winter when those fish go deep, and in the summer when those fish go deep to follow the shad down during the day. So its technique is a bit more niche than the shallower mid-diving crankbait, but it still does produce a lot of fish, and it produces big fish when that bite is on. I'm not going to go too in depth on it because I already talked about crankbaits, but I'm going to put it at a solid C tier. Next, let's talk about the punching rig. Now, punching is again a pretty niche technique. So, punching happens when you're in those lakes that have very dense uh hydrilla, tules, any type of grass where those fish are just tucked in under the grass. So all you're going to do is you're going to pull out a really big hook with a really big, I'm talking one, one and a half ounce ba uh, weight, and a crawdad style uh, bait. And you are going to just flip it on straight braid, straight braided line and a heavy rod. And you're going to just try and hook a fish and just pull them straight out of a whole clump of grass. So it's a very niche technique. It definitely works because I actually fish the California Delta a fair amount and that's one of the more prominent ways to catch fish out of that place. But man, when it's on, that bite is so fun. But it's a niche style. Again, it's a very niche style. There's enough places in the country though where I think this bait has its uses so for that reason i'm gonna put it as a c it does work across the country there just needs to be a lot of grass in your body of water all right next we're going to talk about blade baits this is going to be a pretty short one because i personally don't fish blade baits a lot there is a fantastic video from a couple outdoors uh, a couple outdoorsmen and tournament fishermen uh, they call themselves Tactical Bassin on YouTube. One of my favorite guys to watch, both of them are, and they're California natives, so for me that's really cool. They did a great video on blade baits and lipless crankbaits, and it was so in-depth, so just informative. I'm going to send you guys to that video. I'll probably drop a link up in the top or if not definitely in the description for you guys to watch if you guys are interested so for me 
I'm going to put this at a C tier because I know that it has its time and place and lipless crankbaits and blade baits work really well. I'm just not going to be the best one to explain them. All right, next, let's look at the Nico rig. Now, the Nico rig is something that I picked up about three or four years ago. It was something that kind of went under my radar for a long time. And it's a pretty new bait as well, or new technique rather. And this bait, you have what's called a nail weight. And it literally just looks like a little nail. And you stick it in the end of a plastic worm of some kind. You put the hook halfway up in the middle. And you just balance it or drag it along the bottom. Now this bait... Kinda seems like a drop shot. It it reminds me of a drop shot, except for the weight and the worm and the hook are all connected. There's not line in between. But this bait, as opposed to the drop shot, does not get hooked up as much in rock. So that, in my opinion, is where it shines. I remember one tournament I had actually in Clear Lake in Northern California, where you know the drop shot was catching a couple of fish here and there, but the Nico rig was absolutely slaying them. I was catching probably five, five to one Nico rig fish versus drop shot fish. And for that reason, I'm going to give it an A. It's not quite as good as something like a Ned rig or a drop shot, but when you need to use it around grass or, so, or sorry, around rock it shines like nothing else. On the market. Next, we're gonna look at small boot tail style swim baits. Now, I've been talking about them a lot on these various techniques like the Texas rig and like the drop shot, but I haven't really talked about the bait itself. It kind of is its own class. You, Like I said, you can throw it on a jig head, you can throw it on a drop shot, you can throw it on a Texas rig, but the idea is still the same. It's a very finesse way to mimic a bait fish. So this bait is generally just slowly swam through the water and it just looks like a small thread fin or a silver side and it flat out catches fish. I mean, I don't really know what else to really say about it. It you definitely need bait fish around so that I guess would be the only niche part of this bait. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a B. It's got a lot of uses, it's versatile, it's a pretty cheap bait, but it definitely is specific to time of year when you have a lot of bait fish around. Alright, we're going to transition from that small swim bait straight into the Alabama rig. Now the Alabama rig is basically a small swim bait on steroids. And by that I mean you have a connecting head with typically five wires off the back, and you have five of those little swim baits. So it's meant, obviously, to mimic a school of bait fish swimming around. It definitely has its time and place to produce, and when it produces, it produces in a big... It catches a lot of fish, it catches big fish, and when there's an Alabama rig bite, you're not throwing anything. You are just full-on cranking... Casting and winding, casting and winding. For that reason, I'm also going to put it in a B tier. It is pretty niche. It is pretty expensive to get the whole system. But man, does it catch fish. Next, let's look at the Carolina rig. Now, the Carolina rig is a little bit different from all the other finesse techniques that we've talked about today. All you've got is a little egg sinker or a bullet sinker and then you've got a swivel or a little stopper to stop it in that specific stop spot and then you've got about two to three feet of line depending that goes to typically a texas rig craw or worm now this bait is meant to be dragged you're not supposed to pop it you are purely supposed to just drag it along the bottom and just let that bait slowly move behind it. It is a very finesse technique. It is a technique that works 
when those fish are super lethargic and you need a bite. And I think just because of how painful it is to throw this thing as slow as you need to throw it, I'm going to put in an A tier. Otherwise, it is a fish catching machine. You just have to put in the time and not tear your hair out trying to catch a fish on it. <laughs> All right, let's get back into some top waters. It's been a bit since I looked at the top waters again. Let's look at the walking bait. Now, walking baits are basically pretty self-exclamatory. If you pop your rod tip with slack line, there, there's a certain technique for this, but you can literally make that bait walk side, 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 and it just walks through the water in the zigzag motion. And, man, when those fish are active on that bait, holy, it just, they can't resist it. I've, I've been, I've been on lakes where those fish are active on bait, and you can see schools of them jumping on those baits. You just tuck that walking bait out there and just start quickly walking it through that school. You're, you're going to get bit nine times out of ten, and it is Fun. It's probably the most entertaining way to go out and catch fish. The problem is those fish definitely have to be active. This is very much a uh, summer and fall uh, technique. Very active, it's very quick, but it's good and it produces big fish when that bite is on. And I've definitely seen tournaments won on these top water baits. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a B. It's a pretty easy bait to throw once you understand the way to get those baits to walk, but it's definitely a good bait nonetheless. All right, next, let's look at frogs. Now, frogs are a bit more niche topwater. I mean, think about where you'd find frogs. You find frogs in kind of marshy conditions. You find them around these the, the swamp grass and grass in general. So that's definitely where you're going to throw these baits, and that's where these baits shine, right around grass. You're not going to throw this in open water for the most part. I've seen some crazy stuff, but typically anywhere around grass, summertime, spring and summertime are the times that you throw this bait, and it does produce fish. It produces big fish. The problem is it is a very niche technique. So for that reason, I'm going to throw it in D, not to say it's a bad bait. And I kind of want to preface that really quick. Just because I'm throwing some of these baits in, you know, C tier, D tier, uh, D tier, P, or E tier, means that they're bad baits. They're really good baits. They're just very niche or they're very expensive or they only work in certain conditions. But there's a reason to have them if you're a more advanced fisherman or if you live in the areas where that's where they need to work. All right, next let's look at the Freeline Sanko. The Freeline Sanko is something I put in its own class. And the big reason for that is that I just, it, it, it's become its own technique. It's not a drop shot. It's not an eco rig, it's not a net rig, it's not a Texas rig. It is a purely do nothing bait. You throw it around cover, you know, if there's a line of toolies that you're on, if there's a, a set of trees that you're on, you're just going to flip this bait right into that tree or into that cover. And that bait is just going to slowly kind of flutter and fall just directly horizontal and i've i've caught countless countless fish on that technique but it is literally a do nothing bait you throw that bait out there it hits water it flutters down all of a sudden you'll see your line just start going out to the side and it's like wait he just picked it up it's a very finesse bait but when that bite is on it produces so many more fish than I, I've ever seen caught on any other technique. I, I've had I've had forty fish days on on a free line Sanko. It's it's a ridiculous technique. 
it doesn't work well in wind you kind of have to be calm water to actually get it to produce well or else you're not going to be able to cast it well i'm going to put it in a i'm going to put it in a just because of how well it produces next we're going to look at the jig the jig is a very versatile bait you can fish it up shallow you can pitch it around cover you can throw it out deep on ledges or rock piles and it's going to catch fish you can even swim them. They have something called a swim jig. And the swim jig purely is meant to look like a bluegill or a shad. And you just swim it along with a little boot tail style small swim bait like I talked about earlier. And it produces big fish. The jig is one of the best producing baits. And it's known around the country as one of the most consistent baits to catch fish on anywhere in the country. And I know a lot of pros who have told me like you know find one bait to fish for the rest of my life I only have one what would it be half ounce black and blue jig i've been told that by multiple pros and honestly i understand why it's just it's just all around just a really good bait for that reason that's gonna be one of our s tier baits just because i know how how much people really look up to this bait all right, let's look at the buzz bait. This is gonna be the last top water in our tier list here. The buzz bait is finally gonna be that bait that is for aggressive fish around grass. That's where this bait shines. If you're fishing around toolies, if you're fishing through grass, it is an amazing bait. It makes a lot of noise. It's a very fast bait. Oh, I've caught a lot of fish on it. And the fish that I've caught have always been big. I don't really think I've caught a fish on that bait that was under four pounds. But when you're in a body of water with big fish and it's producing, you better hold on because it is going to be a wild day for you. I'm going to put it in B tier. And that is because it works in very specific areas, very specific times of the year when topwater fish are active. But it produces big fish. It's kind of like the A-Rig. A lot like the Alabama Rig. And last but not least, we've got the Jerkbait. I I've caught so many fish on the Jerkbait, man. I really have. Because between the shallow diving Jerkbaits, where you're throwing right up on the bank and jerking it out of the shallows and like over a flat, versus, you know... A deep diving crankbait where you're trying to get down to a rock pile or something it it produces fish and it just gets a reaction strike out of them i've had countless days where i'll throw the swim bait to start something more finesse and i'll just get a bite and miss it bite and miss it it's like man what's going on i switch to jerk bait boom that jerk bait starts producing and it produces in a big way Again, I've had 30 to 40 fish days on the jerk bait as well. For a good swim bait, you do need to spend a bit more money. So that's the only downside I would say to this bait is for a good one that actually produces good numbers and big fish, you do need to spend a little bit more money on it. With that being said, I've caught so many fish on it. It has been a very beneficial bait to me in tournaments. So for that reason, I'm going to throw it up in A tier. It produces so well and works so well. So there you go, guys. That is the completed tier list that we have for a lot of different techniques in bass fishing. I've been super stoked to make this video for you guys. I know it was long, but if you guys made it to the end, congratulations. You now know a lot more about fishing than you did previously hopefully this gives you guys a better idea next time you go out and try and catch some bass of where to go what to use what to look for and then hopefully soon i'll just be making some more in-depth videos about fishing and just slowly advancing you guys kind of through my thought process in fishing so that's going to be all i have for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed the content Please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.